Hello and welcome to 6502 Assembly Language Programming. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, indirect addressing methods. Um, I covered these in the video on addressing method methods overall, um, but I've had a couple questions about the indirect ones because they're more difficult than the others. And I thought I'd just draw them out uh, visually here and see if we can make a little more sense of them. Um, there are three of them, and we'll go through them kind of from least important to most important, I guess. Um, you can tell they're, the indirect ones always involve parentheses. That's one way you can recognize them. As far as in, in assembly language, you always have parentheses around something in an indirect uh, operation. And the, we call them indirect because it means it's not going to actually function on this address, it's going to function on an address that it finds there. So it's going to use this indirectly to go get an address and then work on it. So we've got some sample locations here that we're going to work with. Some in zero page starting at 8.0 going up to 8.7 and these are the values that I put in them just um, for our example. And then this is just some some areas out in memory that we'll be running into. So to start with the first one here, um, sometimes it's just called indirect, sometimes it's called indirect absolute or absolute indirect, depending on which book you're looking at. But this is the one that only works with jump commands, uh, jump operations. It's the only, the only instruction that uses this method. And so that's one reason you don't see it a lot. But what this does, if you run into this in code, And all these numbers are hexadecimal, by the way. What this does is it goes out to 2000 in hex and it gets the number, you know, gets that value right there. And it takes that as the low byte of an address. Then it goes to the next address, which in this case would be 2001, the very next address after it, and it gets that byte and it uses that as the high byte. And then it jumps to that address. So it builds an address out of the low byte and then the high byte that it finds here at 2000 and at the next spot because you can only you can only refer to one. So it always gets a low byte from this address and the high byte from this address plus one puts them together into an address and then jumps to that. So this if if this is what's in memory, this is equivalent to this. The difference is if you're writing your program and you don't know what this is going to be until the program has done some calculating or something, then you know you can use this as an indirect way to say, okay, we've filled in the address we want to jump to now. Now we can jump indirectly by saying, put parentheses around 2000, and we jump indirectly then to the address that's being held at 2000. Okay. So no, no code, you know, this isn't code here at 2000. This is just an address that's being held. Then there's one thing you have to know about this one. Um, there's sort of a bug or a design flaw that if, if you do something like this, jump to 20 FF indirect, this won't work, or at least it won't do what you expect because it'll go to 20 FF, let's say, Let's fill those in right here. Let's say we have 20 FF. There would be some space here. And let's say that holds 30. And then 2100 would be the next address. Let's say that holds 45. Okay. And then there'd be some more space here. So you would expect it to go to 20 FF, get a low byte, and then go to the very next memory location and get a high byte and jump to that. But it doesn't do that because since it's crossing a page boundary here, the the, C, the, the 8502, 6510, whichever version of a 6502 processor you're using, it won't increment the page. It just increments the second part, the, the second byte of the address, the low byte. And so what it'll actually do is it'll go first of all to 20FF and get 30 like you expect. But then it increments the FF and wraps back around to the top of the, the page 20. 
and get 62, and so you'll actually jump to 6230, which is probably not what you want. So if you're if you if you're using this, and typically you would use this as a jump table is usually the reason you would you would have this. Um, usually, and the, and the kernel does quite a bit of this. You'll have a, a series of addresses in memory, and that way you can jump to that address by jumping indirectly to the location that holds it. Just make sure you always start them on even numbers, and that way you're never going to have this situation because even if you did get to the end of the page, you're, you would be going to 20FE, which is the next to last one, and it would get then the low byte from this, and it would get the high byte from 20FF, and then you don't have that problem. You don't have that wraparound problem. So that's just something to watch out for. It's not likely to ever happen, but if it did happen, it could be really confusing to figure it out. All right, so that's the jump indirect or the indirect jump, or whatever you want to call it. So let's move on to the second one here. This is almost never used, but we'll talk about it anyway. It is used some in the kernel, in the Commodore kernel. What this does is we, we call it indexed indirect, and which can be a little confusing because then the next one's called indirect index. And the way you can remember the names, or that I the, the way that might help to remember the names is that indexed comes first in the one that uses X. This one only works with X as the index. This one only works with Y as the index. So if that helps you remember the names, you don't really need to remember the names, but if it helps you remember the names, the one with the X come, has indexed with an X in it come first. There's a little, little bit of a mnemonic there. What this one does is it does the thing inside the parentheses first, kind of like an algebra um, parentheses you know, you do the stuff inside the parentheses first and then you go outside the parentheses. So it does the thing inside the parentheses first, then it does the indirect business. And so that's why it's called indexed indirect. It does the indexing first and then the indirect. So what this does first is it adds X to 80. So let's say we've got a little bit of code here and we load X with zero and then we load A with 80 comma X and indirectly. All right. So what it does is it adds X to zero or it adds X to 80. And since X is zero, that's just 80. Okay. So it goes to 80 and it gets a low byte. Again, we're going to get low byte and high byte. It goes to the next location, which is 81 and it gets a high byte, which in this case is 20. And then it does the load A from that location. So it doesn't load anything, or as far as your program is concerned, it doesn't load anything from 80 or from zero page at all. It's just getting an address from this location in zero page, from the address that the 80 comma X points to, and then the next one. So 80 comma X gives you the low byte, 80 comma X plus one gives you the high byte, Put those together and make an address and then that's the address you, you act on and so this is going to result in A being equal to 62. Okay. Here, let, me, let me put that here. So this results in A being equal to 62. Now what if we increment X and then branch if not equal back up to here? Well, now, so we increment x, x is not equal to zero, so we branch back up to here. Now x is equal to one because we've incremented it. So now 80 comma x is 81. So now the low byte is gonna be 20. And then the high byte is gonna be from the next one, which is gonna be zero, zero. So now it's going to load A from 0, 0, 20, which is something in zero page. It's probably not what we want, um, but that's where it's going to load it from. So in this case, you've got, you do the indexing, you add X to 80. Since X was 1 after being incremented, you get 81. So you get the low byte from 81 in zero page. You get the high byte from the next one, 82 in zero page. You get 0, 0, 2, 0, and that's where you load A from. Okay. So... Realistically, you would probably never do that because you can see what's what's happening here 
and I, sh- I should mention this only this only does zero page locations. That's both of these here. This one doesn't, but this both of these require you to be using a zero page location, which is one reason your zero page locations are so precious. What you're doing here is you're treating this as an address, you know, 80 and 81 together as an address. So probably the next one you're going to want is going to be 82, 83. And you're probably going to have a series of addresses in memory if you're actually using this this uh, type of method, this indexed indirect method. So you're probably more likely to have this increment x twice and then branch if not equal back up to here. So let's do that. Let's say, OK, we've, got, we've come through once when x equaled 0. We'll put that over here. A equaled 62 because it got it from 2000. Now the second time through X will equal two after being incremented twice. And so this is going to be 80 comma two. So 82, it's going to get the low byte from 82, zero, zero. And then it's going to get the high byte from the next one, which is 83, which is three, zero. And now it's going to do this load A from 3000. So this time the indirect, the indirect address comes from because this is being indexed on X, it comes from 82 and 83. The indirect address is 3000, and so it's going to go get the byte from 3000, which is 26. So if X equals 2, then A is going to equal 26. If we go around the loop one more time, we increment X two more times, so now X equals 4. Branch of not equal back up to here. Now 80 comma 4 means we add 4 to 80. So we get 84. We load the low byte from here. That's 0, 0. Load the high byte from the next one, which is 40. And this becomes like we're doing a low day from 4,000. So when x equals 4, we get a from 4,000, which is 6d. So what this allows you to do is allows you to have pointers, uh, a, a series of pointers in memory that can point out to different places. And you can adjust these. So, you, you know, you could be walking these through different blocks of memory or whatever. But like I say, it's hard. It's hard for me to even just off the cuff think of a use for this. Um, one I was one I thought of was if you were writing a text editor and you have strings, lines of variable length, maybe you store them in memory and you have a, a series of pointers in zero page then pointing to the beginning of each line. So maybe you would say, okay, I start loading it in. Maybe my file comes, maybe my file starts at 2000, but then the, that line ends and the next line is at, um, the next line starts at 2001D, 21D, and maybe the next line um, starts at 22.5 and so on. Maybe the next line starts at 23.2. And that way you could easily access each of your lines based on this table. Um, like I say, that's, that's one possible use I can think of for it, but Mostly, you, you know, you could you could write a lot of code before you'd ever use this one, but it is there if you think of a, a use for it. Um, now I screwed all these up. I got to put them back for my next example. Okay, so let's move on to the one that we actually use quite a bit, which is the indirect index or Y indexing. Sometimes this one's called X, X indirect. Sometimes this one's called Y indirect just because of which one you use. In this one, the indirect, the indirection comes first and then the indexing. So let's give basically the same example, but this time with Y. We load Y with zero. Load A from 80 comma Y. Well, this time we do the indirect part first before we add the Y. So we go to 80, we get an address, which is low byte first, then the high byte from the next one, 
2000, but now we still need to index by y. So this is like, so this becomes in, internally in the processor, this becomes load a from 2000 comma y, y is zero, so it loads a with 2000. And so if y equals zero, then a is going to be 62. So in the very first example, we get the same result. But now, let's say we increment y in branch of not equal back up to here. Now y is 1. Well, since the indirect part comes first, we still get the same address. We still go to 80. We get the low byte of 0, 0. We get the high byte of 20. But now y is 1. And so we go to... This becomes load A from 2001, and so if Y is equal to 1, A then is FF. Then it increments again, come back around. Again, the indirection comes first, so we get an address, an indirect address of 2000, comma Y. Since Y is 2 now, this becomes load A from 2002, and so when Y is equal to 2, this gets 32. The reason this is so much more useful is it means, first of all, you don't need a whole table of zero page locations to do anything useful with this. You can just have one. And that's what we have in our, um, well, in the last couple programs we've written in the series. Um, I think the 10 pin, I think the 10 print program used this and I'm, I'm sure the worm program does. So, what this allows you to do is dynamically say what block of memory you're working on and then still be able to index around in that block. So if you don't necessarily know what part of memory, what, what page of memory, let's say, until the program is running, or if you want to be able to change that to work on different pages at different times, you can do that just by changing this. So let's say, Let's say you filled up a section of memory from 2000 up to 20 FF. Well, then you want to move on to the next section of memory. You just increment that. And now these all become 2100 comma Y when you do this, because it gets the low byte here, the high byte here. So this is a lot more, this is just a lot more useful because it can go out and you can, by, by adjusting this, you can change which block of memory you're working on. And then you can still index on that so that you can change different bytes in the block. <clears throat> and also, by if you leave Y as zero, which is, I, th I think that's how we do it in the worm program, you can just have one pointer that is moving around through memory doing things. And as long as you keep accessing it indirectly like this with Y as zero, um, let's use an, give an example of that. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah, let's just do this increment 80 and then we'll branch if not equal back up to here. So what this will do is like right now, this is going to do a load a as if it's going from 2100 comma y, and since y is zero, that's just gonna be the same thing as 2100. So load a from 2100, then we're gonna increment 80. This is gonna to come to a one. And so the next time around is gonna load from 2101. And then the next time around, it's gonna load from 2102. The, the point of this is it allows you to, you know, if, if you already knew what location you needed before the program started, you wouldn't need to do the indirect part. You could just put the address in there. But anytime your program doesn't know until it's running what address it needs to work on, like if your worm is moving around and you just need to keep changing your pointer to that location, that's when you use this because you can't hard code in where it's going to be at any particular time. You've got to be able to keep adjusting that pointer. So, like I said, this this is more useful just because of the the things it lets you do, um, and the fact that you only need one zero page location to do it. Um, or like in the worm program, we have two zero page locations because we have one one pointing to the head and one pointing to the tail of the worm. But still, that's only two. That isn't a it isn't a whole table of locations. So, I think that pretty well covers it. If you have any 
uh, questions, uh, certainly leave them in the comments. Um, but I hope this kind of cleared up the whole indirect addressing thing. Um, you really, you could you could write a lot of code without using these first two, but but this third one is really powerful, really useful, and if you never used it, you would you would pretty much have to start doing self modifying code to do the same thing without ever using this one. Um, that that would just be the only way around it. You'd have to have your code rewrite its own operands um, on the fly, which would be a lot more um, trouble. Be a lot, a lot, a lot like a lot more likely to cause bugs, um, and uh, probably less efficient too. Uh, these commands do take some clock cycles because the CPU is loading in. You know, it's it's going out and getting information, loading that in, and then using that to go out and get information. So these aren't fast operations, but still, I think they'd be faster than rewriting rewriting your own code on the fly, having it modify its own operands all the time. So. If you get this one down, it's a it's a big help to your programming. And I think that'll be it. So I um, hope this was useful and thanks for watching.